Welcome to a special year in review edition of Northeast Journal. I'm your host, Joe Cullen. Coming up in the next half hour, we're going to take a look back at some of our favorite stories and interviews from 2016. We'll also visit the toy shelf in North St. Paul, and we'll see some highlights from the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce's Business Showcase. All that and more is straight ahead on Northeast Journal. Everyone, and welcome to a special year in review edition of Northeast Journal. I'm your host, Joe Cullen. Every month on Northeast Journal, we give you an inside look at the people and places that make up the Northeast section of the Twin Cities. As I just mentioned, this is a special edition of Northeast Journal, where we'll take a look back at some of our favorite stories and interviews from this past year. Before we do that, though, we recently visited the Toy Shelf in North St. Paul to find out how they make sure all kids in the North St. Paul and Oakdale area will have some presents this holiday season. It's that time of year again, the holidays, where parents are excited to buy presents to put under the Christmas tree for their kids. But for many, times are tough and there simply may not be enough money to buy any gifts. That's where the toy shelf in downtown North St. Paul steps in. The toy shelf was started over 10 years ago by Norma Worm and Dawn Peterson. They initially thought of just opening the toy shelf for birthday gifts, but realized there was too big of a demand for Christmas presents too. And I basically wanted this to be mainly for the time of the year that, that isn't Christmas. And I had even considered in the beginning that we wouldn't be open for Christmas. But that's impossible. It's, you know... We do our job here and, and people keep coming, so we'll just stay open. Parents can come in to browse the shelves and pick up a couple of free toys for their child. All of the toys have been donated by area residents. It's been an amazing project. The community that has helped us has just been amazing. Uh, I mean, the stuff just keeps coming. And we keep giving it away. <laughs> And that seems to be good. It just works that way. Peterson tells us her favorite part of running the toy shelf. Oh, I think I enjoy the, when the families come in and they're appreciative. Uh, what my friends say, they'll say, oh my goodness, what a nice thing you're doing. Um, cleaning up some of the toys, some of them are more fun to clean up than others. And putting them together and being creative. So all of that. Peterson and Worm hope to keep the toy shelf open for many more years to come. Yeah, when people say uh, you get more out of giving than receiving, it really is true. Uh, and we've felt that over and over and over again. I hope it keeps on going. And uh, we, yeah, you know, we're going to get old one of these days. Not yet, of course. But uh, so we need to have someone to take over at some time, too. The toy shelf is located inside of the Specialty Floral Building on East 7th Street in downtown North St. Paul. You can drop off donations there or in the red bins at the City Halls in North St. Paul and Oakdale, as well as the Oakdale Discovery Center and Anchor Bank in North St. Paul. There were plenty of treats and no tricks at all the day before Halloween at the Oakdale Area Business Showcase put on by the Oakdale Area Chamber of Commerce. Here's some highlights. The uh, Oakdale Showcase consists of over 70 vendors. Uh, they all can come from Oakdale, Lake Elmo, Woodbury, Maplewood, North St. Paul. And we're just trying to open it up to the community to let them know what different businesses there are around and also have a great safe time trick-or-treating same time.
There's trick-or-treating at every booth, so we invite families to dress up in costume and come trick-or-treating. Um, the uh, vendors themselves dress up, and there is, um, like I said, trick-or-treating at every single booth. We have a face painter, we have a balloon artist, we have food. It's just a really fun family event. We love the showcase. This is the second year of the showcase, and it uh, allows us as an organization of the Chamber of Commerce to get our, our businesses great exposure, our area businesses great exposure to the population. Last year we had 1,800 folk that came through. This year we're hoping for even more. We've had a busy and fun 2016 here on Northeast Journal. We're going to use the rest of our time this month to take a look back at some of our favorite stories and interviews. Here's one we did in February about an astronaut originally from White Bear Lake who came home to talk to students at his old high school. Most kids dream of being an astronaut, a professional athlete, or a rock star when they're young. But as they grow older, they realize the odds are stacked against them to make it in a career where so few get the chance. White Bear Lake native John Cassida is living proof, though, that it is possible, as he's a NASA astronaut. He recently came back to his home state to speak at his old high school in White Bear Lake. It was super exciting. It hasn't changed a whole lot, I'll be honest, and that was really neat and welcoming. And I might even be able to see a couple of my... Uh my old teachers, which would be really neat. Cassida told us what his goals were for his speech to the students. To get them excited, uh, and not even necessarily about what I do, just about uh, some of the opportunities that are out there, and uh, so they're excited about uh, what options they've got. Um, whether it be in science and technology, I hope it is, uh, but whatever it is that they're doing, that they, uh, that they love what they're doing. Cassida graduated from White Bear Lake High School in 1991, and after earning his doctorate in physics in 2000, he was commissioned as a naval officer. In 2013, he was selected as one of eight members of the 21st NASA astronaut class. He's certainly earned many honors in his lifetime since leaving White Bear Lake, but he's quick to credit his time growing up there as a key to his success. It's a great foundation for, for any kid. I mean, of course, the education is, is incredibly solid and uh, you know, it is a great community of support uh, from both family and, and, and colleagues in the community uh, of, of teachers and coaches. Um, you know, obviously I've never grown up anywhere else, but this was a great place to do it. Cassida spoke to a gym full of juniors and seniors first thing in the morning before visiting with other science classes. That evening he spoke at the University of Minnesota. He hopes his visit was worth it to help inspire the students that occupy the same school he once called home. I hope they never self-select, right, or self-eliminate. Uh, that's, uh, the, you know, if I had, if I had thought uh, that I was the one who needed to decide if I was going to be an astronaut or not, I probably wouldn't have applied because I would have thought, well, there are a lot of other uh, capable uh, people out there and it's just, uh, the odds are against me. And uh, as soon as you eliminate yourself, it's over. Um, so hopefully they... Uh, they, they take chances where it makes sense. We love going into our area schools to find out about the amazing things our area teachers and students are up to. We visited Otter Lake Elementary to meet a group of students who were forming friendships with other kids in Haiti. It wasn't that long ago that the only way grade school students could communicate with kids in other countries was to become pen pals and wait weeks to receive letters. But with current technology, third graders at Otter Lake Elementary in White Bear Lake can have instant communication. Today we had a Google Hangout, with, which is a video conference call between uh, the third grade classroom here at Otter Elementary and our uh, a partner school, uh, Anna Primary School in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. Steve Asper is the technology support manager for the White Bear Area Schools, and after meeting teachers in Haiti, decided to connect students there with Luan Oklubja's third grade class 
at Otter Lake. The whole thing started when I was went down there the first time as a volunteer and um, was helping to get the school some technology. Um, this level of technology in a Haitian school is pretty unheard of and so we're really fortunate to have been able to, to do that. And so I went down and helped set the, up that technology down there. And so then this is the, the next step in the progression is how can we open doors for, for Haitian students through technology just like we're doing here in Minnesota. The Otter Lake students spent about an hour chatting through translators with the students in Haiti, asking each other questions and learning about the similarities and differences in their schools. We spoke with a few of the Otter Lake students to find out what they thought of the experience. I thought it was really fun to learn about a new culture and work with other people to understand new languages. It was awesome and cool. It was very um, cool to meet other kids and different like places just to meet them. The two classes plan to keep doing Google Hangouts every month and they might even try to do an art class at the same time. School officials see this as a positive experience for everyone involved. Well, I think anytime we can connect with others from other countries, it just helps open our minds and, and broaden our horizons a little bit. And, um, and discovering other languages and other cultures just helps to do that and it helps our understanding even of um, people that we, that we see and work with every day. One of my favorite stories from this past year was meeting 93-year-old Phyllis Carlson at the White Bear Lake Library. She was so inspiring and taught us it's never too late to pick up some new skills. Let's meet Phyllis. Phyllis Carlson is quick to point out that she's not just 93 years old. Well, a little bit more. <laughs> In like two more months, I'll be 93 and a half. This 93 and almost a half year old is a regular at the White Bear Lake Library, and not just to check out books. Phyllis is using a computer and email for the first time in her life. She decided to give it a try after seeing a sign at the library for computer classes. Well, I saw the sign in the library and it said uh, computer classes. And I needed it because I'm hard of hearing. I can't hear on the regular phone. I have a CapTel. My CapTel wasn't working. So I had to call my daughter-in-law to email my daughter. So I, when I saw that, you know, it just clicked. Phyllis has a hard time hearing people on the phone and thought emailing would be a great way to keep in touch with family. The first person she emailed and heard back from was her brother in Arkansas, who was in his 80s. Oh, I thought that was wonderful. It even went to my niece in Hawaii. And, uh, you know, I got uh, grandsons in Oakland, California, and Washington, D.C. I've got a niece in uh, Sheldon, Georgia. Uh, so news travels very fast. Phyllis attends a weekly computer class at the White Bear Lake Library and then comes in at least two other days a week to write and check emails. She says she's still learning the ropes of using a computer. Oh, I make mistakes yet. <laughs> well, but I'm determined to learn. She says she's grateful for the patience of librarians, including Ann Wallstrom. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun working with all the patrons here at White Bear Lake, but Phyllis has just been pretty adorable because she really is is wants to learn what she's doing. She really wants to stay in touch with her family. She's really motivated. You know, she comes in on a weekly basis and it's just been fun to get to know her and share her enthusiasm because, you know, that's what we do at the library. We want to connect people and stuff like that. Technology has changed a lot throughout Phyllis's life and she's glad that computer and email exist. Oh yes, I've got a world of knowledge to learn. Oh, it's, it's a marvelous invention. You know, it, when I can hardly manipulate it for somebody and a younger person to have invented this out of thin air, you know, it's magic. Phyllis believes if she can learn something new at age 93, then there is no excuse for anyone else to not try. I would say go for it. <coughs> And learn just as much as you can. If, if the more you can you can learn, the more independent you can be. It's time for a short break. 
We'll be right back with more of our favorite stories and interviews from 2016. Here's a little Christmas music from an award-winning singer that is a friend of this program to tide you over until after the break. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? In the lake, snow is glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Gone away is the bluebird. Here to stay is the new bird. He sings a love song as we go along. Walking in a winter wonderland. Welcome back to our special Year in Review edition of Northeast Journal. You can't have summer without ice cream. We were lucky to sample some delicious and healthy ice cream at a new shop in downtown North St. Paul. Here's the scoop. If you love ice cream, then North St. Paul is the place for you. Susanna and Ilya Gorodisher own and operate Love Ice Cream in downtown North St. Paul. They make all natural ice cream and chocolates there and will soon open a cafe. Susanna says the idea for Love Ice Cream came about after she made her husband change his diet. He said, you know, Susanna, if you think I can you know, live a life of kale, this is never going to work. I need my chocolate. I need my ice cream. Um, and we started thinking and we both just decided, you know what, there's got to be a way to make ice cream. It started with the ice cream without sugar. Susanna's husband, Ilya, is a scientist by profession, and that knowledge was vital to creating an ice cream that was free of sugars, but full of taste. No one ingredient worked. The ice cream might taste good right out of the ice cream maker, but it wouldn't freeze right, or after two days, you know, it was like a brick. So there were lots of reasons why it didn't work, and it, that's where the science really, really helped us and we were able to formulate just the right recipe, making our mixes at just the right temperatures, holding them for just the length, right lengths of time. Um, there's a lot of science that went into it. Family and friends loved the creation Susanna and Ilya came up with and encouraged them to start selling it. They were a bit resistant to that idea at first. At our point in our lives, I'm thinking to myself, what are we doing? We're approaching 50 and we're, we're gonna <laughs> start a new business. I mean, so many people are like winding down at our age. Um, but in any case, I kept saying, well, you know, if the stars align, if I'm not going to lose sleep over it, then we'll pursue it, we'll consider it. And, and the stars aligned. After using communal kitchens throughout the Twin Cities, Susanna and Ilya found a space in North St. Paul where they can make and sell their treats. The city of North St. Paul, from the onset, were like, we welcome you, we welcome you, as opposed to other areas that we talk to who really wouldn't even return a phone call or an email, let alone saying, we would love to have you here. So, I mean, our heart goes out to the city council people, the mayor, the community people here in North St. Paul, the residents have been nothing but wonderfully welcoming. One of the most rewarding aspects of making this all natural line of treats is providing something that kids with food sensitivities can enjoy. When we have a parent come up to us when we're doing a demo with this bright, shining, happy child because, you know, mom, can I try this? Or dad, can I try this? And I'll go through, we're, we're soy free, we're gluten free, we have no sugar added, there are no artificial ingredients of any kind in our products. We have 85% of our products that are dairy free as well. And these little faces just light up, you know, that they can finally have a treat, you know, that they can eat that, aren't, that isn't gonna make them sick. So those are the really joyful times that we have. Love ice cream products are available at a number of grocery stores and co-ops throughout the Twin Cities. The cafe on East 7th in downtown North St. Paul is slated to open this summer. More information is available at loveicecream.com. We have a number of great farmers markets in our area communities, and this year a new one popped up in Vadnais Heights. We visited there a couple of times to take it all in. 
Residents of Vadnais Heights don't have to travel very far anymore to go to a farmer's market. This is the second week of the inaugural season of the Vadnais Heights Farmer's Market. Um, this initiative was part of something that we were a part of with, the, with a group called the City Center Task Force. So it was made up of business owners from the area in the uh, County Road E corridor, in addition to some city representatives to bring more vitality and events to the city center core area of Vadnais Heights, and this is one of the, the successful projects. The Vadnais Heights Economic Development Corporation worked closely with the St. Paul Growers Association to bring this farmer's market to the community. Vadnais Heights City Administrator Kevin Watson is thrilled that the farmer's market is now a reality. Real excited to have the farmer's market. I think uh, they're great amenities and attractions, uh, especially for the locals and hopefully some outside visitors. So we're real excited as a city and the city council and city staff to have uh, such a great, unique uh, event here weekly until the end of summer. Besides fruits, veggies, desserts, and other foods, you'll also find ways to support the community at the Vadnais Heights Farmers Market. The White Bear Area Emergency Food Shelf has a booth at the market where shoppers can donate money and buy a reusable tote bag. Yeah, we're really excited to be a part of the farmer's market to offer an opportunity for people to buy an extra bunch of vegetables and donate it to a neighbor in need. Um, we were really excited to work with Ling and the St. Paul Farmer's Market to allow uh, folks to use their EBT cards here too and to participate in the Market Bucks program to get uh, increased access to healthy foods for all our neighbors. Each week, a different community organization will also be on display at the farmer's market. Recently, Bear Power, which is a partnership between health partners and area schools, was the featured community organization. Well, the farmer's market's a perfect place because we have our veggie vote, um, and we get parents and kids to say yes or no to fruits and veggies, and as you can see, most of the kids and parents really like really like what they're eating today. It's a cherry tomato and a cauliflower. Um, we have our resources here and we're actually kicking off our Veggie RX program in the local clinics, the Health Partners clinics. Um, if you come in for your checkup appointment and you have a kid, you can get a $10 coupon to either Cub or Festival Foods. The Vanis Heights Farmers Market runs every Wednesday from 2 to 6 p.m. in the parking lot of the Helen Hool Medical Building. Now that we're taking a look back at 2016, I'm beginning to realize that I do an awful lot of stories about food. Here's one we did this fall on a White Bear Lake man who is getting noticed for his line of barbecue sauces. If you're looking for a great barbecue sauce, then Pa is your man. Pa is actually Steve Truston, a White Bear Lake resident. He tinkered in the kitchen for years perfecting his recipes and with the urging of family and friends, decided to sell his sauces as Pa's Barbecue after being called Pa instead of Grandpa by his grandson. We recently caught up with Pa at the White Bear Lake Farmer's Market to learn about the four types of sauces he sells. We started with the sweet heat and the tangy heat last year. I just started this last year as far as at the Farmer's Market. The sweet heat is very sweet, it's the molasses M and after about three seconds, you get a pop out of it. This one actually took third place at Treasure Island Food Fest in June uh, down at the casino. The tangy heat is the vinegar end of it, so you get the tang and the heat right up front. These two I came out with this year, Midwest heat, because so many people last year, probably 30% of the people came by and they want something with no heat. So Midwest heat equals no heat. Uh, tastes great, but it's super, super mild. Somebody came by and called it family friendly. And then the smooth heat mustard is indescribable. I, I, I don't know exactly how to describe it. So I've had people tell me it's like a Carolina barbecue, uh, like a uh, Georgia mustard. Um, it, it just, I don't know. It, but it, like I was telling one, the couple that came by, uh, make coleslaw with it, potato salad, uh, Goes with dipping, pretzels, uh, uh, shrimp, goes with everything. Truston has been thrilled with the response he's received from his customers. It's one thing when you know your friends and your family tell you it's great and you wonder, okay, is it, are they just being friends and family? Uh, but then when you get in here and it actually 
complete strangers are buying it and then they're coming back in two weeks saying they ran out and, uh, and they want some more, then it's a little more reality involved. You can find Paz barbecue sauces at the White Bear Lake Farmer's Market and in grocery stores including Kowalski's and Festival Foods in White Bear Lake and Hy-Vee in Oakdale. Every month on Northeast Journal, we also try to bring you an in-depth interview right here in our studio. Here's a look back at some of the guests we were lucky to be joined by this year. It's been a long project. Um, originally, our goal was actually to have the building moved in time for the township sesquicentennial, which was in 2008. So uh, that gives you an idea of kind of how long uh, things have been going on. The um, town residents at the annual town meeting uh, in back in 1996 authorized the town board to make the move and it's been talked about ever since um, but finally obviously the trigger was pulled and, and it was important to get it off the property where it was at because um, there was some interest in using that site for other things. The Autism Society is a nonprofit organization that focuses on education, advocacy and outreach and we actually turned 45 this year so we were established in 1971 and when we were founded, it was by largely a group of parents who were really frustrated with the lack of resources for kids in schools. Proud to say that it really is an event for all ages, all everybody. It, we have things that really, I think, hit every demographic from the little, our littlest kids to our most senior community. You know, it's really a fun event that captures a lot of things for people. Heritage Days is, is an event that brings our community together and it's for all ages of the community. We have from having a senior picnic to having um, games for kids and inflatables and um, it also brings our organizations together. Well, that's a look back at 2016 here on Northeast Journal. I'd like to thank all of our loyal viewers for watching us this year and thanks to all of our hardworking staff here at GTN who make this show look great. Look for more stories and interviews in 2017. We leave you with one more holiday song from a local man who has entertained audiences across the globe. See you next month. I'll be home for Christmas.